In this video, we are going to be talking about how to predict the position of equilibrium in acid-base reactions. The equilibrium of acid-base reactions is always going to lie to the side of the weaker acid. Um, and all of these calculations and all of the pKEQ equations are from general chemistry. Um, and so most likely in organic, in organic chemistry, you are not going to be required to do all of these calculations, but this gives you um, a little insight as to why the equilibrium always lies to the side of the weaker acid. So this is really just to give you a better foundation. So the first equation we're going to look at says that the pKEQ equals the pKa of the acid on the left minus the pKa of the acid on the right. So if we look at um, this reaction here, we see that the pKa of acetic acid is about 4.75 and the pKa of the conjugate acid, which in this case is just water, is about 15.7. So if we calculate the pKEQ, um, we take 4.75 because acetic acid is on the left, minus 15.7 because water is on the right, that equals negative 10.95. So this doesn't really tell us much um, as far as where equilibrium lies because to determine where the equilibrium lies, we need to find the KEQ. Um, and so we need a, a new equation. So the KEQ is going to equal 10 to the pKEQ. I'm sorry, 10 to the negative pKEQ. So in this case, we've already found the pKEQ to be negative 10.95. So if we take here 10 to the negative negative 10.95, we get 10 to the 10.95. And so as you know, 10 to the 10.95 is a very, very large number. So when we have a KEQ um, that is a very large number like this, we know that the equilibrium is going to lie to the right. And if we look here at the beginning, it says that um, the equilibrium always lies to the side of the weaker acid. This is true because water is a weaker acid than acetic acid. And we know this because a smaller pKa is going to be the stronger acid leaving water here as the weaker acid. So this is more of what you're going to be required to do in organic chemistry. Um, you're going to be finding the relative acidity um, using ARIO and then based off of that you can determine where the equilibrium lies. So remember if we're using qualitative perspective we don't know the pKa values so we're going to pretend that we don't know these. And this is just the same reaction that we had in the last one, but we're just going to use a different way to find it. So remember that um, when we use ARIO, we're looking at the conjugate bases of the acids. So here we have acid, base, conjugate base, and then the conjugate acid in this case doesn't really matter. So we have acetic acid, the conjugate base is going to be this right here. Um, and then we have um, this negative charge on an oxygen, which is A for ARIO. And then we need to look at the resonance as well. Um, and it is resonance stabilized. So, but just looking at that doesn't really tell us much because we're comparing two acids because we need to know which one is the weaker acid. So if we pretend that this equation is flipped and water here is the original acid, so let me go ahead and change colors. So now we have water as the acid, we have the base here, and then NaOH is going to be our conjugate base and then the conjugate acid doesn't really matter for this. So now we're looking at the conjugate base of water, which is NaOH. But as you know, NaOH dissociates in solution. So really, the conjugate base is going to be OH with a negative here 
on this oxygen. So looking at ARIO, for atom, it's on an oxygen, and this has no resonance. So over here, this conjugate base was also on an oxygen, but it has resonance. So remember, this conjugate base is going to be more stable, which means that this acid is going to be stronger. And this conjugate base is not as stable, meaning that water is going to be the weaker acid. So weak acid. So what I would recommend um, for doing this is just going through your book and doing a bunch of practice problems. And if you don't already have um, a good background on how to use the ARIO acronym, um, there is another video on how to go through and use that acronym to determine acidity. So definitely do a lot of practice and go back and look at other videos if any of this was confusing. I hope you found this video to be really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what Organic Chemistry 1 class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building. You will find all the details you need about these services on our website, www.baylor.edu slash tutoring. You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online or just drop in during any of our open business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.